Hello internet and it's that time again we're doing another episode of Experimental Cataclysm. If you're new here this is a show where I talk about the recent changes made to the experimental version of Cataclysm and we do have some pretty neat stuff this week including some new monsters, a really fantastic change for crafting, and some ability to customize your character in the middle of the game. On that note I will be talking about some new monsters. I will not be going into crazy detail on what they do but if you prefer to discover those things yourself you should avoid that section of the video. Now, there will be timestamps in the description down below and hovering over the video's timeline should allow you to skip to the sections that you want to watch. But all right, let's jump into things here. First up from Sudden Eye Puncture. Great name, by the way. Love that. Uh, and they are a first time contributor. Now this change adds some new monsters to the game. Now these creatures originally appeared in a mod made by this same person, but they have now been added to the core game. Specifically, this adds many new bug type creatures to the game. Now this includes aphids, praying mantises, mole crickets, ladybugs, grasshoppers, ant lions, and water striders. Some of these monsters also come in multiple sizes, including some larvae stage uh, creatures. Now I love giant bugs and roguelikes, I don't really know why, but I do really like this change. Now one thing I do want to say is a bit, <laughs> that is a bit strange about this is that you can tame the aphids using cattle fodder, which will lead to them producing honeydew, and you can then convert that honeydew into sugar. I'm really not sure how I feel about that, I sort of dislike animal products in Cataclysm as it is. Since animals don't have any upkeep, they are essentially free supplies, which I really don't like. And the idea of something just pooping out honeydew, I just don't like it. it just rubs me the wrong way. But really regardless, they are some neat new creatures that have been added to the game and that's usually a pretty good thing. So thank you for contributing, welcome aboard, and I'm always happy to shout out the new folks who contribute something. Next up from, well actually, you know, I don't know how to say your name. We've talked on Discord a few times and in my head your name is pronounced Venera, but I don't know that and hopefully that doesn't don't hate me, okay? But anyway, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this in the show or not, but there has been some significant movement on reworking labs in the game. Now, mostly I've seen stuff that has come from Curse Twist. New, there's some new map gens, some new monsters, things like that. We did talk, I remember we talked about the security feral a while back. And this change appears to be part of that overall effort. But anyway, yes, so this individual, we have here a handful of new creatures that have been added and will appear in labs. Now, there are too many of them to cover in detail, but the list is that as far as I can see, I think they're all mutants. And this is actually quite a large PR that not only adds the creatures, but also adds new special attacks and an ability for one of them to buff nearby monsters. Now, one of these creatures is also described as a sort of boss or mini boss. I'm really not doing this PR just this. There's quite a lot of things here, many of which I think are pretty cool. We actually don't have as many mutants in the game as you might expect there to be, so I sort of think this is a ripe area for expansion. Anyway, check out this PR if you want to flip through the dozens of changed files. There will be a link in the description down below, and keep your eyes peeled next time you pop into a lab. Next up from Night, we have a rework of the in-game tutorial. I know, did I just blow your mind? Uh, our previous in-game tutorial has not been uh, well, frankly, it has been terrible for a really long time. For years, it's been untouched, and I don't think most players have even tried it. Uh, when I first started playing, I tried the tutorial, and I hated the game, and I put it down for about six months. It wasn't until later, when I discovered Vormithrax's tutorial series, that I came back to the game and played it again, and if it weren't for YouTube tutorials, I would not be sitting here making this show and being an active member of the community. And people have talked literally for years about improving our tutorial and yet no one has ever stepped forward to do it. Now enter Knight coming to the rescue. Now I've had a quick look at this but I don't super remember the old tutorial so I'll just be mentioning some things that are pointed out in the PR here. It looks like there was an expansion in the number of pop-up lessons that will appear for the player and the example used here is the different movement modes. Now when I played the tutorial way back in the day, sprinting wasn't even in the game so it doesn't surprise me that there was no mention of prone or crouch or sprinting as they're much newer modes. Now Knight also has added a tutorial dummy for the player to attack, which uh, doesn't mean very much, but I think is pretty neat. And again, I haven't really looked at this in super detail, but I love the idea of expanding our in-game tutorial. Now, yes, I'm a YouTuber, and yes, Cataclysm tutorials are the most viewed thing on my channel. So it might seem like this is a conflict of interest for me, but it's really not. Having a more comprehensive tutorial in the actual game will reach people who are unwilling or don't think to go to outside sources for information 
information. And there will always be people who will still watch video tutorials. There's nothing, there's no issue here for me. Expanding our tutorial is absolutely great and I'm really happy to see it. But anyway, moving on. Next up, we have a couple of changes to money in the game. Now, first there was additional coins and banknotes that were added to the game by KO Hedgehogs. This not only added new coins and new paper money, but it also added sort of money bundles to the game. So for coins, these would be the rolls that you might get at the bank and then bundles of bills for uh, paper money. Now the other change to money is from L Tank, which allows players to exchange their pre-cataclysm cash for digital money. In other words, you can now go to an ATM, trade in your old bills and coins and receive that value on a cash card. Now for a long time now, we've had some form of cash in the game uh, in one way or another. Back when I started playing, we only had one currency item other than cash cards. It was called, I think, a bundle of money or bundle of cash. And many people regarded this as one of the most useless items in the entire game. But anyway, obviously since then we've had additions of the various bills and coins that you would find in current world U the United States because that's where the game takes place. Now, I really like those things. I think they flesh out the world. Many people still have cash in their pocket despite the widespread use of bank cards. So I don't really have much to say about this change, like opinion wise, I just, I think it's really cool that we can now exchange those old world currencies for digital money on a cash card. Now, I honestly thought that ATMs were on the chopping block to be removed. They, they kind of don't really make sense. Really, they sort of magically still have power and sometimes somehow they still connect and are able to find people's account information despite it being the apocalypse. So I always assumed that they were going to be removed. Regardless of that though, these are some neat changes and it's nice to see them added to the game. Next up, also from L Tank, we have probably the biggest change of the week. Uh, this is the practice recipes that have been added to the game. Now this change essentially added a few recipes to the game that you can use to gain practical skill in areas that are otherwise difficult to raise practically, which is a confusing sentence, but if you remember last time when we talked about practical skill versus theoretical knowledge, one of my bigger concerns was that some skills could not be raised practically. In other words, going out and trying to grind up your computer skill to level 6 by hacking consoles would be virtually impossible. Well now, L Tank has made it possible for you to level your practical ability with computers by crafting these quote, practice recipes. Not just computers, by the way, I've seen practice recipes for computers and for lockpicking and obviously it's very likely that this will be expanded to use more skills before too much longer. Oh, and I should have said up front, they can be used to rapidly practice your proficiencies as well, not just your skills. Now this will likely become the best way to practice your proficiencies instead of repeatedly crafting and then deconstructing items until you get to where you wanted to be. Now you can get these recipes from books or by auto learning them at certain skill levels or by having an NPC teach them to you. Some books will now have an additional line when you first skim them and it will say it might help you figure out some more recipes. This is an indicator that the book in question can teach you the practice recipe. However, this practice recipe does not appear in the recipe list for that book. The argument in the PR is that this is because it's not really a recipe since there's no end product for the craft, it's just you practicing. I really dislike this, it still uses the recipe system, it still uses the crafting menu, it should appear in there somewhere as with the other recipes. Plus the line that appears when you skim the book only appears when you first skim the book, and it's in the log which is some place that people may easily miss the message. Once you've done that, there's no way for you to see that this book contains that special practice recipe. If it were in the recipe list with the book entry, it would appear regardless of when you looked at the book and you would be more likely to notice it. Regardless though, once you've acquired the recipe, it will show up in the crafting menu alongside all your other crafts. Now like anything else, it will have a skill and a tool requirement. I don't think any of them currently consume items, they only have tool requirements, which are obviously not consumed by the recipe, but in the future it is likely that they may also consume things as well. If I were practicing, say, my blacksmithing, I would probably end up using scrap metal that would later be discarded. I also do really like the flavor of these recipes. One of the computer's practice recipes, for example, says that it's you practicing command line and writing scripts. And I really like this because that is something you would realistically do to expand your ability with computers. Now there is also a new tab in the crafting menu specifically made for practice items. You can't really use the filter system to find practice recipes unless you know their name. Now I originally thought it would be nice to add an option to our search window to look for practice recipes only, but making them have their own tab also works and I think it does make sense. 
Although I will say, since this tab is then broken down by skill, this will mean that there will be a couple dozen subcategories, which probably will end up being hideous and unpleasant to navigate in that way. But anyway, that is the gist of this change. Now I do have a couple of concerns I wanna mention, although I will also then talk about why this is an absolutely amazing change. So firstly, using computers as an example, there is no practice skill for computers from level zero to level one. You need to have at least a practical skill of one to begin practicing. Now I don't think this makes sense from a realism perspective. There should probably be something that lets you practice at level zero, at least in my opinion. And second, I really think that these need to be added to that book's list of recipes. Now I understand that they don't have a final product, but I do really think that they should be displayed there. They use the recipe system and these will be easily missed by players if they're not obviously displayed. Having their own tab in the crafting menu will help people find them, but new players may not understand that they're receiving these from books and they're something that they should be keeping an eye out for. I also have concerns over the speed at which you currently gain skill. At the moment, these practice recipes will level your computer skill incredibly fast, much faster than you could any other way in the game. I imagine that this will be tweaked in the future. I just wanted to mention this because it seems like game breakingly fast at the moment and I don't want people to expect that they will always be this way. I suspect that this is something that will be tweaked and refined in the future and that they will probably slow down. Now they are still going to be faster than practicing your skill in other ways, but this speed is just a little bit much at the moment. And it's also worth mentioning that currently in the game, the practice recipes only exist for the computer skill and the lock picking. Is that a skill still or is it all proficiency? now but it's only computers and locksmithing i don't i don't know in the future obviously this will likely be expanded but at the moment it's just those two things but now internet let me extol the virtues of this change previously if you wanted to raise a proficiency you would essentially craft the same item over and over and over then you would disassemble them to get your materials back if you were even able to do that and then you would repeat the whole process this change will make the whole process take way fewer keystrokes, which I know is something that some people are very concerned about. People hate pressing buttons, I guess, which is weird to me because it's a video game and you are expected to press buttons. Now the rate at which you gain proficiencies or skill experience through practice is also probably going to be higher than simply just randomly crafting items. I think this also makes sense because as you're learning, you are specifically targeting those skills and proficiencies rather than making a final item, which would instead be a culmination of multiple skills and abilities. You are practicing that one specific thing. Now these new recipes will also likely have lower ingredient costs. Now we can't practice this yet, but let's use the blacksmithing proficiency as an example. If I were going to try my hand at craft raising this proficiency, I would have to craft quite a few items out of metal to slowly raise my percent progress. In my last playthrough, I'm pretty sure that I made three or four weapons and maybe five pieces of armor and a variety of forge tools and things, but I still had not gained the blacksmithing proficiency. But if I were to practice, it might be something as simple as grabbing some lumps of steel and just drifting holes into the same piece of metal over and over and over. I'd be learning an important part of blacksmithing, heating and working the metal, punching holes, but the actual amount of steel that I would be wasting would be pretty minimal. Now compare this to just diving into crafting a full set of metal arm guards or a cuirass. Now I would end up wasting a lot of material just through failure. And go ahead, make fun of the way I say cuirass, I don't care, well, I can feel your judgment. But this is a much more realistic approach. No one starts off blacksmithing by making 40 knives until they got the basics down. No, they start by working lumps of metal, learning to hammer them into different shapes, learning what temperature their steel needs to be at to work it properly. They practice drifting holes for handles. They practice sharpening scrap pieces of metal. That way, when you finally go to make your first knife, you understand what you're doing and you've learned enough about it that you're gonna do a halfway decent job. Anyway, I should probably shut up about this and, and just wrap this section. In summation, I think this is one of the best changes that we've had since 0.f was released. This will be an enormously beneficial thing that I think will make pretty much every player's life a little bit easier. Now I might have missed something in all of this, but it's also still developing. New skill and proficiency practice stuff will probably start trickling into the game in the near future, and we'll talk about really anything major that changes in this area. For now though, we should probably move on. Really, uh, really good work though, L-Tank. I'm super happy to see this come to the game. 
And then finally today we have a few new ways for you to customize your character in the middle of your playthrough. You can now change a variety of things about your character's appearance. Hair is changed via a haircut kit which would be facial and head hair. Your eye color and skin tone can also be changed by using a mirror. Now these are purely cosmetic changes and they have no impact on game mechanics. Additionally, changing your eye color only works in some tile sets. Altica, for example, as far as I know, the player pawn does not even have an eye color. In the character menu, that is the uh, menu that you access by pressing the at symbol on your keyboard, you can also customize your character. You press Y to open a sub menu which will allow you to change your character's name. Very simple, very straightforward. And yes, finally, let's talk about the other option in this menu. You may now change your gender in the game. Now gender in Cataclysm only does a few things. Mainly, it changes what your character's sprite looks like, assuming that you are using a tile set that has different sprites based on gender. The other thing that gender does is determine which pronouns NPCs will use when they talk to you. Now as far as I know, that's about all that gender does, that, that's it. Pressing this button is not magically changing your character's anatomy. This is not a sex change operation button. This changes your gender. So, this is a purely preference and cosmetic thing. You do not gain an edge by changing genders, it does not have any significant impact on gameplay. All this does is change the way that you view yourself and the way that the world around you sees your character. Now when this change happened, there were some very strong reactions. Some people loved it, some people absolutely hated it, and some people, as always, fell in the middle. Now, I have been more or less advised by people not to talk about this, and frankly, I'm torn on that mindset. So I have a few things I want to say and then we'll just wrap it up here. Now I've seen people spew hatred about transgender and gender fluid people. I've seen people say that this is a huge step for representation for marginalized groups. And I've seen people who just shrug and say, this is nothing, this doesn't represent anyone. So I don't know what exactly people want me to say about this change. My take is that you are a human being. You have your beliefs and you have things that are important to you and you have things that you dislike. I am just some idiot on YouTube and I probably would not be able to sway you even if I cared to do so. What I will say is that I believe the Cataclysm community contains a wide variety of people and that it should be a safe place for people to express who they are. This is a single player game and changing your gender is about preference. I do not understand why anyone would care about someone else expressing themselves in a single player game. My personal belief is that hatred in any form is a huge waste of your time and your energy. I really don't understand the hate that surrounds this change. And I believe that our community should be open and accepting of people. So you're going to feel however you want to feel about this and I won't try or be able to change your mind. But for those of you that feel that you have some representation now, those of you that this actually means something to you, well, we see you. We know that you're here and you belong in our community as much as anyone else and you are welcome here. And that's probably all I've got to say about this topic. Like I said, people are all over the place. I'm not going to argue with anyone. You're going to think whatever you want, and that mostly is okay. And that's it for this week's show. Everyone, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.